Welcome to the Agent Program Initiate. I'll be waiting for you inside. Follow the lights, please. Majestic, isn't it? I'm Diana. I'll take you to your quarters. Someone likes to keep secrets. Secrets are our stock and trade. Besides, from what I hear, you have a few of your own. I'm not like you, in case you're wondering. I'm in the Handler program. Agents and handlers work in unity. You know the expression, know your enemy? Well, that part is my job. Knowing your enemy is only half the victory. I know. You also need to know yourself. I'm working on it. I read your case file. Impressive work. Partly textbook, but I suppose field work never is. Tell me, what did it feel like, taking lives? Random. Disordered. Is that why you came here? Why you let us test you? Maybe I'm not the only one being tested. Well, we are here. Basic training starts at 0600 hours. I should leave you to prepare. Are you sure about this? I am. There are no second chances, Miss Burnwood. Not here. I choose him. May I inquire why? A blank slate? Antisocial? Apathetic and unresponsive? No doubt the boy shows promise, but... Perhaps I see possibility where others see limitation. Isn't that what a handler does, sir? We'll see. Anyone can kill Miss Burnwood. He still remembers nothing? If he does, he's not sharing. We will check up on his story. The hospital in Romania. In the meantime, keep him under close watch. Welcome to Advanced Mission Training. This operation originally took place in Sydney. The target was Calvin Ritter, infamous cat burglar, also known as the Sparrow. You will need to infiltrate the yacht, isolate and eliminate your target and exfiltrate, all without arousing suspicion. And remember, as an ICA agent, you are the most dangerous person in any room. But blunt force will get you nowhere in this business. And a true assassin never calls attention to himself. Good luck, Initiate. Advanced mission training complete. And may I say, elegantly done, Initiate. I guess my hunch was right about you. I look forward to the final test. How did you know? I told you he had talent. His stats are off the charts. Such skills and reflexes. They could only be the result of previous training. Power like that, with no moral restraint. He could be dangerous. I thought that was rather the point, sir. All agents have weak spots, Miss Burnwood. Pressure points to keep them in check. But this one... <sighs> Perhaps it would be better to just... Give me a chance, sir. Give him a chance. I will take full responsibility. Very well. It's your show. I just got word. Romania was a dead end. You're saying that he lied? Place is real enough. Deserted. But we found no trace that your man was ever there. Or anyone else, for that matter. Someone erased his steps. Hmm. We'll keep digging, of course. But frankly, it's as if the Earth just spat him out. Are you still determined? Does it matter? I was told there'd be no second chances. Don't believe everything you hear, Miss Burnwood. My decision stands. Very well. I'll be watching. The final test is based on an authentic 1979 mission. The high point of training Director Soda's career as an active agent. The target was Jasper Knight, a famous US chess master exposed as a Soviet spy. Soda's caught up with Knight at a military airfield in Cuba and eliminated him against all odds. This will be your objective as well. Now listen carefully. ICA exams aren't normally this difficult. 
Not only was the airfield a virtual fortress, but he even added additional guards. Sodas wants you to fail. He considers you a threat, and this way, your unfortunate exit from the program won't raise any eyebrows. Well, if he thinks we're bowing out, he is sorely mistaken. Good luck, Initiate. First things go. Step one, strap yourself in. Uh, okay, all strapped in. Step two, locate the ejector seat handle. Uh, yes, found it. Step three, pull the ejector seat handle. Right. Here it goes. Pull. Well, I never thought they would use a functioning jet. Good thing you didn't save this parachute. Anyway, you did it. Excellent work, Initiate. I bet Sodas didn't see this coming. Now stay calm and head towards an exit. I hope you know what you just did. The chopper leaves at dawn. Now get out of my sight. So what happens now? You go back into the world, disappear, stay on your own and on the move. When we need you, we will contact you. And so does. He played his hand and he lost. He cannot touch us now. <laughs> Still, I can't believe we beat him at his own game. If you know your enemy. <laughs> Quite right. I should tell you, the trail went dead after Romania. Our team found no records of any kind. No name. Nothing. I think they called me 47. That's not a name. So make it one. All right. Agent... 47. I have 
have seen the consequences. I have felt the cost. That's what defines me. Good evening, 47. Your destination is the Paris Fashion Show by Sanguine, one of Europe's leading couture brands. Your targets are Sanguine owner Viktor Novikov, a former oligarch turned fashion mogul, and his partner Dalia Margolis, a retired supermodel, an iconic power couple on the global fashion scene, and two of the most dangerous people in the world. Novikov and Margolis are in fact the ringleaders of Iago, an enigmatic spy ring that deals in the global elite's most valuable secrets. Unscrupulous and opportunistic, Iago has caused disastrous security leaks all over the globe. When Crimean separatists caused a deadly meltdown at the Odessa nuclear power plant, Iago gave them access to the plant security network. And when the Delgado drug cartel shot down the plane of President Hernandez and his family, Iago provided the classified flight plans. Now Novikov and Mogolis have obtained a knock list of British undercover agents, which they plan to sell at a secret Iago auction during the Sanguine show. So our client, MI6, need us to stop the ringleaders before the knock list ends up in the wrong hands. The Sanguine show will be swarming with security, and Viktor Novikov will be the focus of everyone's attention. But despite his posturing, he is merely the money man. The real target is Dahlia Margolis, beautiful and brilliant. She is a master manipulator and the true brains behind Iago. Two targets, a highly public event. At first glance, an impossible task. Then again, I do know how you love a challenge. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Paris 47. The show is just about to start. This is the red carpet event of the season and the guest list is a veritable who's who of the global fashion elite. You will find Viktor Novikov basking in the spotlight, while Dalia Margolis hosts the heavily guarded auction on the second floor for a group of Iago's top customers. Now, event security will keep a watchful eye on any suspicious activity, but I trust your timeless look shall fit right in. Good luck, 47. How was Moscow? Kamarov is gone. I set him up as a Langley spy. It's quite the scandal at the FSB. His death will not be investigated. Your 
return. Very well. The secrets of the global elite. Five years of work. Everything we've collected. This thing makes WikiLeaks look like a gossip rag. The pen beats the sword, huh? I have found that whoever wields the sword decides who holds the pen. Smile, Victor. Your reputation is safe. Now run along. I'm sure you have pretty dresses to attend to. Victor. Good luck with the show. I have a feeling it's going to be the one you'll be remembered for. Morning 47. Your destination is the coastal town of Sapienza, also known as the jewel of the Amalfi Coast. Your target is a former client of ours, Silvio Caruso, a brilliant but troubled bioengineer employed by the Ether Biotech Corporation. Renowned for his early stem cell research, Caruso is now reportedly working on a far more disturbing project, a DNA-specific virus able to infect anyone anywhere in the world. Imagine a bullet, fired in any direction, passing through countless bodies without inflicting harm, invisible and undetectable until it strikes its target. A world of armchair assassins killing with impunity. This is what awaits us, unless Caruso is stopped. Our client, one of Ether's major private stockholders, wants the project cancelled on ethical grounds, but without destroying the company in the process. She has asked us to eliminate Silvio Caruso and destroy the yet unfinished virus prototype. You will also need to deal with Caruso's lab head, Francesca DeSantis, a high-level Ether employee and cutthroat corporate climber who holds intimate knowledge of Caruso's research and could potentially carry on in his place. This is no ordinary contract, 47. Caruso's virus is a serious threat to our craft and trade, not to mention our core ideals. So failure is not an option. I'll leave you to prepare. Welcome to Sapienza 47. Silvio Caruso's family home is right across the square. The bioengineer suffers from acute travel phobia, so the Ether Corporation has installed a state-of-the-art field laboratory somewhere below ground. Expect security levels to rise as you get close to the virus. Good luck, 47. Room secure. Leave me, Bernard. <clears throat> I, uh, I, I want to be alone. Ma'am? Oh, okay. You're dead, and you still look stressed out. <laughs> so, now I have you to feel guilty about. Great. We build a weapon that will kill thousands.
Entering the Ether Lab requires a key card and a uniform. Luckily, it seems both are within reach. What the? Security's in the dark about the incident. A few of the company knew about the virus. Not even the board. Must have been someone at the lab. <sighs> I understand. I'll get to the bottom of this. <sighs> Boss is unhappy. I followed you from Italy. I guess when you're invisible, you stop looking over your shoulder. You did this. Iago exposed you. I see how you did the heavy lifting. I just pulled some strings. Yeah, you mind? How do you expect... I play dirty. That's how you defeat a stronger opponent. You strike from behind. Now give me the key. You have a family? Trust me, if there's a weakness, Providence will find it. Take my chances. The key. Fine. Won't do you much good. It's funny. Cobb said the same thing. Thank you, messenger. Don't. I just killed you. And where even?
Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is Marrakesh, Morocco, where civil riots are looming. Your targets are private banker Klaus Strandberg and army general Reza Zidane, two of the conspirators in a sinister plot to overthrow Morocco's fragile government. Strandberg, a former bank CEO who stole billions of dollars worth of savings from the Moroccan people, was facing trial for investment fraud. But early this morning, a band of heavily armed mercenaries freed Strandberg from his prison transport, resulting in the death of several police officers. Strandberg now takes refuge at his native Swedish consulate, in front of which crowds of angry protesters have gathered, demanding his handover to Moroccan authorities. We believe General Zaydan orchestrated Strandberg's escape to infuriate the public and spark nationwide riots, allowing Zaydan to impose martial law. Operating out of a field HQ at a nearby abandoned school, he will no doubt use the riots to depict the Rabat government as weak and inept, and persuade the general staff to support a fully-fledged military coup in the name of national security. Our client, building contractor Hamilton Lowe, who stands to lose a fortune in government contracts, has hired us to prevent the coup d'etat. To do so, you need to paralyze Zidane's rebel forces and prevent the riots from escalating further, hence the double contract. This is quite the political powder keg, 47, so be careful. The fate of a nation is at stake. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Marrakesh, 47. The situation grows more tense by the minute. The consulate is under lockdown, but the protests are only a stone throw away from full-blown riots, and Zaydan won't hesitate to unleash his troops. So whatever you're planning, time is of the essence. Good luck, 47. But I... I don't understand. There is no sign of forced entry, no alarms, nothing. One of my people has gone missing in Johannesburg. A key bearer. I wish I'd been informed. Still, the system demands two keys, and the rest are all accounted for. Except for your late predecessors. Cobb? But... This plane went down over the Pacific. It was an accident. Such was the conclusion at the time. Yes. Die, Mr. Fannin. Happens all the time, even to us. It seems like a conspiracy. Probably isn't. And yet, the failed coup in Morocco, the ether virus. Someone knows about us. There was a pattern, and I failed to see it. Providence is under attack. 
How much was there? Money? <laughs> Not money, Mr. Fennin. Information on all of our assets and operatives. Like you. Take a trench, Director. And make it a deep one. Because none of you are safe anymore. Good morning, 47. Your destination is the Himapan Luxury Hotel Resort on the Chao Phraya River, just outside Bangkok. Your main target is Jordan Cross, the lead singer of The Class, a renowned indie rock outfit recording their highly anticipated sophomore album. But this millennial poster boy harbors a dark secret. One year ago, promising young actress Hannah Highmore fell to her death from Cross's penthouse loft in Dumbo, New York. According to the police, Miss Highmore's death was a tragic accident, but her parents remain unconvinced. They firmly believe that Cross murdered Hannah and only escaped justice due to the power and influence of his father, billionaire media mogul Thomas Cross. A secondary target, Ken Morgan, corporate fixer and attorney to the Cross family, is also staying at the hotel. Cunning and unscrupulous, Morgan was a key agent in the cover-up of Hannah Highmore's murder and Jordan Cross's subsequent acquittal. The Highmores understandably want retribution, and while the system may be powerless, ICA is anything but. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Bangkok, 47. Ken Morgan has booked the Queen Suite, but has yet to check in. You will find him in and around the restaurant. Oddly enough, Jordan Cross seems completely unaware of his presence. Cross and the class have set up a recording studio in the Emperor's Suite on the third floor. Private security around Cross and his entourage is highly capable. Still, I'm sure you can find your way into his inner circle. After all, today is Jordan Cross's 27th birthday. The age when rock stars die. Good luck, 47. Mr. Morgan, sir. When can I have my suite? Please accept my heartfelt apology for the mishap earlier. The Queen Suite is ready for you. Follow me. Well, that was relatively fast. Very well. Lead the way. Oh, yes, yes. No, go on. Go on with your work. That is Jordan Cross, revered and reviled in equal measures. No, you did. Morgan! You brown nose! Did what you get are you clean towels? Uh, Jordan, my boy. Fancy seeing you here. Cut the shit, Morgan! Did he send you here? Huh? Did my father hey, send you here to, to you. spy on me? <laughs> I knew it! I knew this would happen! You two in cahoots? You my father's lap dog too? Oh, and you, Morgan, you flabby sycophant. What's in it for you? Huh? This old vampire grooming you for CEO? Is that why you let him treat you like his two-bit errand boy? Huh? Where's your silver tongue now? Jordan, if you will just calm down, I think I can explain. Things are not this black and white. What do you say we stop making a scene and continue this conversation in my suite. Oh, this better be good. Who's the judge? 
jittery guy over there. Looks like another one of those rock stars. Uh, got How's it? Great. Now they're not even letting guests in. The memo. Fresh mopping here. All right, get out. This is between myself and Master Cross. Uh, um, you sure that's wise, sir? Do it, Otis. Mr. Morgan. Okay, start talking, Morgan. I will tell you the truth. You must understand. It wasn't supposed to go down like this. Your father was merely being sagacious. What are you babbling about? Hannah Highmore's death tape. The proverbial smoking gun that you so precariously kept for yourself instead of destroying the evidence. That's why I'm here. Oh, Dixie. Don't be too hard on Miss Barrett. Everyone has a price, and it is usually lower than you'd think. We did not mean to use it, of course. Not unless you left your father no choice. Oh, you wouldn't dare. You covered it up. Look, I'll take you down with me. All right? You and my dad. Your father and I acted in good faith. How were we to know that Dexie Barrett helped you tamper with the crime scene? Made it look like an accident? It's Miss Barrett you call on the tape, not your father. The bribes and the hush money all came from offshore accounts in your name. Don't bullshit me, Jordan. You and I are in very different leagues. A bastard! Target down. Now on to Jordan Cross. Dad? Please call me. It, it happened again. Both targets down. Now head towards an exit. Shot. Tom. 
Thomas Cross had billions in hidden offshore accounts, all stripped clean within hours of the kidnapping. Someone wanted the son dead to lure out the father. Someone smart enough to stay in the shadows while we did the wet work and the High Moors picked up the check. A shadow client. Someone got rich. The contract was just. That was a sound problem. I know you don't care about politics, 47. But ICA is neutral, or as has been. Can't allow ourselves to be manipulated. Besides... It's happened before. Italy. Morocco. Paris. All our clients got their intel the same way. Anonymous tips from a hidden source. Each contract perfectly legit. Yet part of a grander design. I don't see the pattern. Somebody does. The board has asked us to chase down this shadow client, and our analysts are closing in as we speak. I know that tone. Someone's playing a game, 47. The question is... against whom? Good morning, 47. We have a lead on the Shadow Client. ICA White Hats have traced the anonymous data received by our clients to one Olivia Hall, brilliant young hacktivist and suspect in a dozen cases of cyber vandalism. Using onion routing with state-of-the-art encryption, Hall went to a lot of trouble to stay untraceable. She is good, but we are better. Her digital trail has led us to a remote farm in Colorado, where satellite footage has revealed what appears to be the training camp for a private militia, led by an already registered target, Sean Rose, Australian environmental terrorist and explosives expert wanted for a series of public bombings. Rose was spotted near the scene of Thomas Cross's kidnapping, which makes him our prime suspect for the shadow client. Spurred by Eric Soders, the ICA board of directors has asked us to infiltrate the farm and eliminate Sean Rose, along with three other prominent militia members. Ezra Berg, retired Mossad interrogator. Penelope Graves, former Interpol anti-terror analyst, and finally, Maya Parvati, former assassin and gunrunner for the Tamil Tigers. I'll be honest with you, 47. I consider Eric Soda's reasoning hasty and ill-advised. Now, we cannot go against the wishes of the board, but we can conduct our own investigation. Whether a direct threat to the ICA or not, we need to know the Shadow Client's true agenda. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colorado, 47. The militia has taken up HQ at an old apricot farm and appear to be training for a series of coordinated strikes, ranging from cyber attacks to full-blown guerrilla warfare. The Shadow Client appears to unite specialists and radicals from all over the map. Mercenaries and terrorists, hackers and spies joined by an unknown common cause. Satellite scans indicate that the command room is below ground inside an old tornado shelter. Only Rose appears to have access, however, so to get inside, you will need to get creative. This environment is hostile and highly alert, so tread carefully. Good luck, 47. I cannot believe you're still tampering with me. This is taking forever. We need to get this 
That is Maya Parvati, Sri Lankan assassin turned pirate turned insurgent. I'm down. Penelope Graves. We need to talk. You're... Uh... What is this? I'll explain everything at the Slurry Pit. It will be in your best interest. Do as I say. I understand. I'll see you there. So, I just found out that Pavati was a Tamil tiger. Those were some seriously hard people. I'm beginning to see how she got so rough around the edge. Find me. That is not important. Think about this carefully. You could provide us with valuable intel. If you cooperate, the agency will overlook your unfortunate Recruit? transgression. <sighs> and what if I refuse, huh? If I scream and get the guards here? I wouldn't do that if I were you. Might prove unhealthy. I'll give you a few moments to think about it. Good work, 47. This should give her something to think about. Okay, can you just leave me alone for a few minutes? I've got some thinking to do. I'm sure Rose won't mind. Think, Graves. How did they get to you? Flight out of Lyon under assumed name. Passport provided through Delgado and that Vanisher guy. It looked clean. Changed clothes at JFK and again at Denver International. Charred the passport after leaving the hotel. Burner phone was dropped before I left the flight. It can't possibly be that. 
diplomatic car out of Denver. Nothing unusual about the bus ride. Met up with Hall in the middle of nowhere. Burned everything. I saw her do it. There's... There's no... Oh. Graves is down. Excellent work, 47. Yesterday. Another one. Oh, do tell. Okay, so you know how close. Off center, and he just went full OCD. Had to go outside and chain smoke half of What? Someone messing with me? Get back to whatever you were doing. No shit. Okay, so you know how Rose. Someone left in a hurry. Sean Rose was not the Shadow Client. That much is clear. Whoever commands the militia, they got out just in time. Look around, 47. We're getting closer. Someone's done their homework. Look how far it dates back. Hayamoto, Beldingfort, Del Vade. The Shadow Client has been tracking you for decades. Now how is that possible? It isn't. Every one of those missions were branded as unsolved or accidents. He must have been looking for a pattern, a certain M.O., which would mean... He knows me. Well, at least this shortens the list. Some kind of network. Power players. From all sectors. Familiar faces, too. Thomas Cross. Klaus Strandberg. Ether. And that's missing banker Eugene Cobb. Well, well. There's a name. Providence. What? No. No, it can't be. The Hidden Hand. Thought they were a myth. A hypothesis, nothing more. The idea that a small cabal of kingmakers, controlling enough corporate and political leaders, could effectively run the world in secret. Maybe not so hypothetical. Keep looking, 47. We need full disclosure. Found something. So it is. But that would mean... Providence has infiltrated ICA. And Eric Sodas is their operative. Bastard! It all fits! He was the one who persuaded the rest of the ICA board to greenlight this operation. This changes everything. Get out, 47. We got what we came for. What about the Shadow Clan? He is no longer our primary concern. ICA has been compromised. I always wondered if Providence was real, but I never actually... I will need to confer with the board, but mark my words, 47. This will have consequences. Rose is gone. It was me, wasn't it? They tracked me. I don't believe it. I took every precaution. Rose knew the risks. They all do. You did well, Olivia. I am proud of you. Now listen. 
The ICA knows about you. They kept you alive because they needed you, and now they don't. We won't talk again. Not until the storm is over. I don't like it. This man nobody's capable of. You need to end this now. I ran away as a boy. My friend and I, away from that place. We came upon a small farming community. The people were dirt poor, but this woman, she took us in. We were awakened the next morning by the shots. A dozen people lay face down in the snow. A warden didn't like to leave witnesses. They shot the woman and her family last. They made sure that we watched the whole thing. This is your gift, the warden told us. Your gift and your curse. Touching lives only by ending them. better than anyone. Good morning, 47. The board has sanctioned Eric Soda's for termination. After Colorado, we did some digging into Soda's private affairs and discovered that he has been fast-tracked for critical heart surgery at the hyper-exclusive Gama Private Hospital in Hokkaido, Japan. Such a display of power has providence written all over it. Sodas, who suffers from a rare condition known as situs inversus, where his internal organs are reversed, desperately needs a right-sided heart transplant and has clearly betrayed the ICA to get it. He was admitted last night and is currently being prepped for a three-day surgery. We have booked you into Gama under the usual guise of Tobias Reaper, corporate shark, here for a standard medical checkup. As such, you will need to play it by ear and procure whatever tools you need to complete the mission. You also need to eliminate Yuki Yamazaki, a Tokyo lawyer who works for Providence. Sodas has already given Yamazaki access to our client records and has agreed to provide a full list of active ICA operatives post-operation. This transaction cannot be allowed to happen. Sodas must pay for his treachery, and his insidious employers must be taught a lesson. ICA's sovereignty is at stake. Powerful as Providence may be, we need to draw a line in the sand. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Hokkaido 47. The Gama Private Hospital provides cutting-edge medical treatment for the global elite outside the law, if required. The facility is partially run by an artificial intelligence system known as Kai. The AI oversees patient admission to various areas in the hospital and even participates in some medical procedures. You will find Eric Soders in the operating theater, undergoing a pre-surgery regenerative stem cell treatment a highly controversial procedure, yet to be approved by Japanese authorities. Yuki Yamazaki has already arrived. You'll find her in her suite or roaming the restaurant and spa areas of the hospital. Sodas is scheduled to be put under soon. Let us make sure he stays that way. Good luck, 47. to make her spirit and body fly. I'm ready to begin. I'm ready to begin. Miss Yamazaki. Very well. Let's begin. Let us begin with upward-facing dog when you're ready. Fluid movement. 
Very good. Now, transition into Lord of the Dance. Remember to breathe throughout. Warrior two pose. Core, strength. Stay there for a while. Changing sides. Be strong. And finally, tree pose. This one is tricky. Find a good spot for it. This is a view to die for. Target down. Now it's time for Sodas to retire. Miss Burnwood. That's not what my ticket says. We received your message. Loud and clear, I might add. Honestly, you could have just sacked the poor guy. I didn't catch your name. No, you didn't. There'll be no retaliation, not for Soders, nor any other recent fiascos. Someone's been meddling in our affairs, killing our operatives, and making the ICE look like fools. I think you got close to that someone, closer than we've ever been. That's why we're hiring you to take him down. I don't think so. Don't rattle our cages, Miss Burnwood. You really have no idea. You spy on us, bribe our people, and you have the gall to demand our help. No. Can't be 
trusted. Even so, we've been around for a long, long time. I think we could help each other. Some 20 years ago, your agency took in a young man with no past and extraordinary skills. In his own special way, he cares about you and vice versa. And ever since that time, you've never stopped wondering where he came from and who made him what he is. There was a doctor, some depraved experiment, but he's gone now. Ah. Well, if you believe the questions died with him, we have nothing further to discuss. If not, as I said, I think we could help each other. Partners, then. Cheer up, Miss Burnwood. We... <laughs> we are the lesser evil. This terrorist. He wants nothing but chaos. He's only a terrorist if you win. Miss Burnwood, we won a long time ago. This... <laughs> this is maintenance. story so far. Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood, are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. When all of their recent missions turn out to be contracts for a shadow client, things take an unexpected turn. All their targets have been operatives in an invisible organization known as Providence. Providence has infiltrated the highest echelons of power and secretly owns our world. The Shadow Client wages a silent war against them. And so the Constant, Providence's enigmatic controller, seeks Diana out. His request, track down and eliminate the Shadow Client. In return, he offers something irresistible. The truth of 47's lost origins. Neither know that the man they hunt is 47's childhood friend. And unlike 47, he remembers everything. that she and her team are laying low, most likely planning the militia's next strike. Reynard is one of the Shadow Client's top lieutenants, and yet she's not a target. Not yet, anyway. She's no doubt high on our client's list, but for now, it's information we seek. Infiltrate the house and get us a lead on the Shadow Client. Up for some B&E, 47. On my way. Hurry. 
I'm detecting movement up the road. A motorcade, possibly Reynard's. Uploading the data. Hold on. Receiving it now. Hmm. Nothing on the Shadow Client or the other cells. No names, no aliases. I doubt she even knows whom she's working for. Wait, here's something. A message from Robert Knox of Kronstadt Industries. And by the sound of it, he's a Providence operative. A defector. Well, well, well. Client won't like this one bit. And you can't wait to tell him. They're back. Multiple hostiles. I see them. Damn. Okay, we've got all we're going to get. Go to stage two, 47. Eliminate Reynard, and preferably without raising suspicion. One step ahead of the Shadow Client for once. Let's keep it that way. Ugh, I thought this night would never end. What a snob fest. And I even missed out on the action. Oh, I'm sorry you had to endure all that free champagne and cello music, Orson. What can I say? You really took one for the yeah, team. Yeah, well, I say stick to what you know. has given us carte blanche. Hunt down the militia by any means necessary. A week ago, Providence was a threat. How did you swing the board? The board are practical people, 47. A blank check is hard to turn down. Besides, the Shadow Client's war on Providence is causing a global panic. Someone will need to stop the militia. Might as well be us. And the man on the train? told them about his offer. Taking a contract for personal gain is against ICA regulations. Sodas would have been proud. Is that a sense of humor, 47? 
Whatever next? Crying at the movies? Why are you doing this? I know what it's like to have everything taken from you. He claims to know about your past. Your childhood, your memories, everything Ortmeyer stole from you. And you trust him? About as far as I can throw him. But this is our best lead in 20 years. I say it's time we break a few rules. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold. And so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. race is on its last day and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowloon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowloon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get. That red car, 47. That's the Kronstadt race car with Sierra Knox behind the wheel.
Check it out. On it. And now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> If you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor.
Good morning, 47. Our Providence contact has shared the identity of the Shadow Client, a former mercenary and bodyguard by the name of Lucas Gray. His past is a black void, but our analysts are digging deep. Meanwhile, we've had a breakthrough of our own. Comparing the malicious attack patterns with global shipping and transportation routes, we've figured out how Mr. Gray and his paramilitaries move around the world undetected. They're using the distribution network of the Delgado Cartel, Colombia's biggest drug manufacturer. Clearly, Gray must have struck a deal with the Delgados. Consequently, if we can cripple the cartel, we can severely limit the malicious strike range. But to do so, we need to slay a three-headed serpent. Sociopathic cartel head Rico Delgado and his two closest lieutenants, PR guru Andrea Martinez and savant chemist Jorge Franco. With equal parts guts and guile, Rico Delgado runs a thriving billion-dollar criminal empire. The word is, the brutal and volatile cartel head is hell-bent on becoming the number one drug lord in the world. To achieve this, Martinez, a childhood friend of Delgado's, has been buttering up state leaders and decision makers, paving the way for an expansion of the Delgado logistics network, while the brilliant but aloof and antisocial Franco has been hard at work developing a new type of super cocaine. So, three of Colombia's most infamous crime lords inhabiting a decidedly hostile environment. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colombia, 47. The remote village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed Sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village, while Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office or around Santa Fortuna itself. And Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. check on the statue. I'll be back later. Delgado has been eliminated. Nicely done.
awesome. All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work for us. Now head for an exit. Location of primary target unknown, team chasing several leads. End message, encrypt and send. I'm not as strong as you. They have to pay for what they did. It needs to stop. You need to stop. If my source checks out, we can prove the board knew about the chemical leaks. We'll have grounds for a retrial. It won't make a difference. They're too powerful. They're not the devil, Nancy. Just a company. They're not above the law, don't you see? This is bigger than James. Those bastards killed 80 people. And they got away with it. Think about what that means. No one's untouchable. No one's untouchable. Diana! Coming! Got what we came for. Move out. Good evening, 47. The militia has released a hostage tape, outing the existence of Providence to the world. This was a fatal mistake, and our analysts are tracing its origin as we speak. In the meantime, we have a lead on Lucas Gray's top lieutenant. Turns out the Delgado cartel's counterfeiting unit was creating fake IDs for the militia, and one operative in particular stands out, Wazir Kale, an infamous South China sea pirate better known by his nom de guerre, the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom and his cutthroat band of outlaws were the scourge of the shipping industry in the post-recession years. 
But his reign of terror came to an end with the disastrous 2014 hijacking of the supertanker, Francis King. Chinese elite forces stormed the ship, resulting in the deaths of a dozen sailors and most of the Maelstrom's crew. But Kale slipped away unseen. The Maelstrom's connection to Grey is unknown, but we believe it was he who carried out the audacious killing of a Providence CEO in Shanghai, along with two reactivated members of his old pirate gang, Vanya Shaw, a shady figure in Mumbai's criminal underworld, and Darwood Rangan, the gang's old cashier turned dodgy movie producer. Shaw, Rangan, and the Maelstrom form Lucas Gray's Eastern Cell. They are a crack strike team, and stopping them is our client's most pressing concern. Unfortunately, the elusive Maelstrom appears to have vanished into the seedy underbelly of Mumbai, the cradle of his criminal legend, and no one knows his whereabouts or what he currently looks like. So, a bandit queen, a showbiz charlatan, and one certifiable ghost. I shall leave you to prepare. Welcome to Mumbai, 47. One of the most densely populated cities in the world, home to more than 12 million people. If you wanted to disappear and hide from the world, this vast city is perfect. The maze-like sprawling slums offer secret paths and surprises around every corner. The elusive Maelstrom knows the city like the back of his own hand. Locating him will be a considerable challenge. A place to start could be the slums where his former gang, the Crows, has recently risen from the ashes. Darwood Rangan will be easy to find in his half-finished tower, wrapping up his new film called Mumbai Hero. While Vanya Shah has ensconced herself in the overgrown remains of an old train yard. Your three targets call this labyrinthine part of the city home, so choose your approach carefully. How are you today, sir? Ah, beautiful. Magnificent use of colors and form. Kya baat hai? If the new piece catches my forceful that nature like Darwood this... That is Darwood Rangan, I will have producer of mediocre of movies and a full-time criminal. His brutality is overshadowed only by I his I guarantee giant ego. a perfect execution, Mr. Rankin. All right. Chalo, let's get this done with. I expect these to be the final brush strokes, Mr. Hussain. I'm a busy man here. All right, 47. You know, let's see if the aim so of our Kashmirian really friend is true. Look, hmm. once the word gets out and my art appreciating friends see it, your phone will be ringing off the hook. I can't wait. Hold your breath for a moment, Mr. Rangan. That's the reason I told you I wouldn't pay for the commission, by the way. I'm not stingy. No, no, not at all. But if I'm already paying you in exposure, hmm? well, let's not overdo it, huh? you know? I prefer cash over exposure. Clench your fist, please. <laughs> Who doesn't? But sometimes, exposure can be worth more than just money. In this case, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Just wait and see. When you're done with this job, the contracts will be rolling in. That sounds wonderful, Mr. Rangan. Can you look up a bit? Thank you. That shot came from the tools. It looks like the Kashmirian finally got a clear line of fire. Darwood Rangan is dead, and not even by your hand, 47. What will you think of next? Hold up, 47. The Kashmirian is on the move. He's heading for another flat inside the Chawls. This might be worth investigating. If nothing else, we may get a lead on who his client is. <sighs> the new foreman finally graces us with his well, that's us. What do you have to report? Well done, 47. You've managed to lure Vanya Shaw out into the open. Anything could happen here. I see a lot of dead weight. Hmm. I've made a similar observation. Tell me more. Well, the objective is find the root of the problem, work to get close to it, and then eradicate it. I like your thinking. How would you approach the task you see before you? 
My usual method is prepare intensely, study the problem, learn everything I can, analyze all approaches. The idea is to gently nudge people to do what I want. And then, once the objective is in my sights, perfect execution. Not afraid to spill some blood in the process? Not at all. In fact, I find that happens quite often. I like you, Fulton. I think this could be the beginning of a very fruitful relationship. I aim to please, Miss Shah. You think I don't see you down there, little ants? Scurrying about at your own pace? Taking unnecessary breaks? Drinking my water? Wasting my money? You have had it easy up until now. But your new foreman will bring some order to this rebellious behavior. The days of slacking are over. You hear me? That is Vanya Shah taking care of 47. Are you planning on outsourcing all your work to the Kashmirian from now on? But I need to patch you down if you want to proceed. Okay, let me just pat you down here. And you're good to go. Chal, tickle. Time to face the dragon, 47. A mysterious stranger enters the lion's den. I guess you know who I am by now. The Maelstrom. Indeed. Two of my most trusted allies are dead. Childhood friends, lifelong companions. And now you're here. I always see my contracts through to the end. Admirable. Really, it is. I'm assuming that... Yeah, you put out the initial contract that drew you here. She never did like Darwood. Perhaps a power play while our plans are in hiatus? But why kill her, then? Unless... Unless Darwood... Made a counter offer. That would be the smart move. But then you heard the rumors about the return of the Maelstrom. And so you took a chance. You figured if Darwood was assassinated, I would put two and two together. Eventually, I would have to teach the Slum Queen a lesson. You took it upon yourself to help me before I asked. A show of skill. A move to get to the top. Is that right, boy? You can only kill so many monsters before wanting bigger challenges. Darwood and Banya lost their way once they returned here to Mumbai. I blame myself for their failures. I should not have let them go back without me. They got lost in their egotistical pursuits. <gasps> The infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. Mission completed. Time to find an exit. facility until 1962, when the estate was overtaken by an obscure Soviet research fund, the Institute for Human Betterment. It looks deserted. The place was abandoned after a fire in 89. Then, only a few weeks ago, it was acquired by an anonymous investor using cryptocurrency. It has to be Lucas Gray. He's here. Be careful, 47. The breadcrumbs were almost too easy to follow. Could be a trap. Not a trap. 
an invitation. You came home. I knew you would. You've come a long way, 47. And even now, you don't remember. This place. This was our prison, where father trained us, shaped us into killers for providence. Now, you don't remember. They ripped it out of you, wiped it away, but I do. I remember everything. You're a terrorist with nothing to lose. You'd say anything. I know it's difficult. You never miss your mark or question your function, but we made a pact, you and I. Do this. And we both lose. There was an incident. That boy, he died. He lived. Because of you. Don't you remember his name? You know this. Deep down, you know. What was his name? Subject 6. Your name is Subject 6. And what is our purpose? To take them all down. We were gonna tear it all down. The Institute, Providence, everyone who'd ever hurt us. We failed. The partners grew paranoid, made sure that Ortmeier's children would never challenge them again. I'm the only one who got away unchanged. The only one left who remembers. Ortmeier was Providence. Everything he did to us, everything he made us do, it all leads back to them. I'm breaking more rules than I care to count, Mr. Gray. What's your play? The partners hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Only one man knows their true identities. Your client, the top controller, the one they call the Constant. He is the key. <laughs> but he is untraceable. So what am I missing? A man would come to the Institute. A man with a Providence pin. The first constant. If we find him, if he's still alive, he's our way in. You don't know who he is, but 47 does. That's what this reunion is all about. Show them. You're just gonna hand it over. Our one bargaining chip. Olivia. Fine. 47's memory was erased, irreversibly at the time, but after Ortmeier's death, his estate was acquired by the Ether Corporation. And they made an antidote. It's a long shot, I know. This is not how it works. We don't just join the revolution. ICA is neutral, we don't take sides. I hate to break it to you, lady, but neutrality is a side. It's the side of the status quo. People have died, civilians. You align yourself with terrorists, murderers. Sometimes even monsters serve a purpose. Look. Enough. You have a choice. But I made mine a long time ago. I will finish what I started.
subject 47. Most gifted of all my boys. So you're the pick of the litter. Tell me about the incident. The subject ran away. He and another boy. The instigator was punished accordingly. As were all the neighbors. My men did what needed to be done. It won't happen again. Bring your house in order, Doctor. You won't like the alternative. I remember who he is. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus, the legendary Cold War spy master, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka. Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the constant, but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right, so here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus, make Providence think he was the real Shadow Client. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus's house to the Institute in Romania. The case would seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along, and by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, for this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail. A Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive, and we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. Whittleton Creek, Vermont. On the surface, a picture-perfect suburban dream. Wide roads, golden maple trees, and verdant lawns. Most residents here are white-collar professionals, ranging from university staff to government employees. Most, but not all. Janus's unpresuming home is protected by a host of bodyguards, and intel shows that the fragile former constant rarely leaves the property. Nolan Cassidy, on the other hand, roams the neighborhood streets. A recent arrival, the dutiful Providence Herald is busy making threat assessments and settling in with his security team. Now remember, this is about more than just revenge. Janus is the key to bring down Providence. So get in there and find us a lead. Good luck, 47. Central, nothing, just a damn waste of time.
That's the last piece of the puzzle found, 47. While we didn't end up with the names or locations of the Providence partners as we had hoped, this at least gives us a clear bead on the Constant. We can expect to find him at the annual gathering of the Ark Society in November. It should be enough. The Ark Society annual gathering. 47, that's it. That has to be the event where Janus and the Constant are meeting. That's the last piece of the puzzle found, 47. While we didn't end up with the names or locations of the Providence partners as we had hoped, this at least gives us a clear bead on the Constant. We can expect to find him at the annual gathering of the Ark Society in November. It should be enough. Janus. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like him. Still. We are close now, 47. Mr. Cassidy, I'm sorry for the delay. I'm ready to take you to the house. About time. Let's go. You know which one it is, right? Last one on the right, far end of the road. I hope you've got your presentation in order. I don't want this to be a waste of time, you understand me? Yes, Mr. Cassidy. I've been eyeing this place for some time. I trust we can make a quick execution here. Of course, Mr. Cassidy. Nice work, 47. Let's hope he doesn't set off the alarm somehow. Very nice indeed. All right, let me have a look at this thing. Advanced Kronstadt Matrix Laser Home Security System. <laughs> we used to break these open for training at the Academy. The thing about these systems is, most homeowners are lazy. So, they don't reset the factory settings and enter their own codes. Let's just try the standard admin code just for fun. Well, what do you know? It worked. Looks like Schmidt was a bigger amateur than... I imagined. Hmm. Frank, go outside and check the garden. I want to know how visible this vault is from the outside. Anything sticking out of the ground, weird sloping things like that. You got it, sir. So you're looking to sell this for, uh, how much was it again? 1.1? Sounds about right. I suppose that's not unreasonable. And his vault unit? Looks quite versatile. Internal climate control and explosive laser security. All the comforts of home. Yes. Quite interesting. And a nice looking safe in here too. No! No! Don't turn it! Amanda is made in custody taken care of. Both targets are confirmed killed. All that remains now is to find the information we came for and then get out of here. All mission objectives are completed. 47, once you've left Whittleton Creek, I will notify Providence of our discovery. In the meantime, we'll go over the clues you found. 
Once we've located the Constant, we'll make our final move. You make it sound so easy. Society, one of Providence's more obscure outfits. I've heard whispers. A survivalist club for the global elite, billionaires preparing for a global collapse. And now we know the Constant will attend their next gathering. So where is it? That's the catch. The report is redacted. No names, no location. So it's a dead end. I can't track them, not without ICA backup. Now, I'm no big shot analyst, but it seems to me Janus was the Ark Society's founder, so chances are they'll want to pay their respects in private. Track the coffin. Worth a shot. You're right. It comes back in flashes. Fear, anger, but... Like it happened to someone else. <laughs> your gift and your curse. What they did to you. Well, I spent a long time feeling guilty about that. Now, I wonder who got the better deal. Yes. Found something. What are we looking at? The ass end of nowhere. But this is where Janus's remains were shipped to. Our choice for a final resting place, wouldn't you say? Not bad. So we stake it out. Await the next gathering. Then we waltz in and kidnap one of the world's most powerful men. Without ICA backup. Like I said, it's a long shot. We'll take it. all our families do you think you feel more betrayed than i do get some perspective please janus is dead lucas gray is about to join him and a cornered animal is twice as dangerous let's be perfectly clear we were not exposed the threat is neutralized we are back on track even so from this point on we expect you to take no there is no way I'm doing that. How can you question my loyalty? In case treachery is contagious. Do you really want to do this to me? Is there a problem, Secretary? No problem whatsoever, Madam. Here's to loyalty. My man on the 
island confirms that the constant has arrived. We head out at sundown. Here, in case the crew get ideas. Why are you doing this, Mr. Gray? You had a chance to walk away. Why didn't you? A year ago, I'm working security for this banker, Cobb, only to find out he's a Providence operative. I've been running for decades, only to wind up where I started. We've all got barcodes on the back of our heads. Most people just never notice. 47 told me about your parents. How did they die? Car bomb. Surrey, 1989. Company named Blue Seed didn't care to pay for their mistakes. But I like to think no one's untouchable. I'm... I'm sorry for your loss. You feel it, don't you? Unlike him, you feel it all. Everything you've done. It's a dangerous thing. Having a conscience. The Isle of Scale. Headquarters of the Ark Society. Founded by Janus in 1991, the Ark Society is the world's most exclusive club. Its plutocratic members fear the downfall of civilization, and they are willing to pay huge sums to ensure their own survival. Once a year, they gather here to shop the latest survival products and to showcase new initiatives and breakthroughs. Right. These gatherings are shrouded in mystery, so we have limited intel on what to expect on the other side of the walls. The Washington Twins are hosting their first annual gathering as chairwomen of the Ark Society, and the Constant is known to attend every year. Beyond that, you're on your own. Good luck, gentlemen. I dare say you're going to need it. One target down. Nice work, 47. Next up, Sophia Washington. Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now, to confront the Constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the Constant to one of the boats in the harbor where it's quiet. You can use the kill switch to coerce him.
Mr. Edwards. Still think this is maintenance. Oh, Miss Burnwood. What have you done? Changing horses midstream? Truly unprofessional. You know what we want. Where is the carrot? No carrot. You're useless to the partners. Compromised. Even if we let you live, you can never return. Why die protecting them? When I can drag them down with me. It's a bad hand, but it's all you've got. Three families. That's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlyles, the Stuyvesants. Three dynasties secretly pooling their resources over generations, creating a singularity so dense that nothing escapes its gravity. Never heard of them. Well, they've heard of you. In fact, you just became the top of their agenda. Go. We can't give them time to retaliate. Don't take your eyes off him. Be careful. Well, here we are again. I must admit I am disappointed, Miss Burnwood. I had such big plans for you. Save it. I know the truth now. You're outplayed. You have nothing left to bargain with. <laughs> you are so certain. So sure of the people closest to you. He never fails, does he? He never misses his mark. You found a window into his past. And yet, something else remains hidden. A simple truth you learned long ago. Diana! Coming! No one. Miss Burnwood is untouchable. everything about them. The ivory towers are about to fall. And when we're done... Let's cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, the partners are all that matter. There's an issue. Of course there is. Olivia's tracked the names mentioned by the Constant, and they're dead ends. How dead? Obituaries for all three have appeared online. Accidental death, heart failure, lung cancer. They're covering their tracks. Faster than I thought. A contingency plan of sorts. The Constant wasn't aware of it. Well, it seems they didn't tell him everything after all. Something this big will leave traces behind. The Constant says to follow the money. Milton Fitzpatrick. The investment bank. It's a key Providence asset. Which you worked for. The director of the New York branch is a Providence operative. It's our best bet as a way in. I'll tell the pilot to turn the plane around. Right, gentlemen. Here's what we've come up with. The partners are transitioning between identities. But everything is so recent, the Milton Fitzpatrick bank records will still be intact. We've confirmed that the partners have active accounts there. However, the bank's records are remotely updated on a frequent basis. We may only have hours before any leads that could get us the new identities of the partners are gone forever. The data we need can be obtained in two ways. 
The bank's data core can be accessed through the basement vault, but getting inside the vault could be challenging. Alternatively, bank director Athena Savalas, head of security Mateo Perez, and head of accounts Fabian Mann each carry a partial backup drive with data. We'll need all three drives to get the full data. Now, we cannot risk the partners discovering the data breach. Eliminating the bank's director, Athena Savalas, would sever the last remaining Providence tie to the bank and keep our activities hidden. Okay, one more time. We break into the vault, extract the hard drive rack, and eliminate the director on the way out. We. You. Good luck, 47. Welcome to New York, 47. The Milton Fitzpatrick Bank is open for business, but it seems there's some sort of investigation underway. Expect increased security. Your target, Director Athena Savalas, can be found in her top floor office, overlooking the iconic Teller Hall. Head of security, Mateo Perez, is roaming between the vault area and the Teller Hall, talking to employees and head of accounts, Fabian Mann, can be found on the investment banker floor and the top floor of the bank, driving the internal investigation. Remember, we need to secure the data from the bank's reinforced vault, or alternatively, acquire three hard drives carried by the director and her two lieutenants, Mann and Perez. Good luck, 47. I'm here for a meeting with Director Savalas. I don't think... It... Oh. Yes, of course. That's right, go inside. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, have a seat, please. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, as you must be aware, we've been running some numbers internally. To measure the flexibility and productivity of people working here at the bank. Work hours, output versus input, sales portfolios, late nights and early mornings, things like that. I've been reviewing personnel files for the past few weeks, and a couple of files stood out. Yours, for instance. Is that so? I have quite specific expectations when it comes to my employees. How you appear and act reflects directly on me and this building. And, well, you've certainly managed to stand out, Mr. Jackson. Tell me, do you knit those sweaters yourself? Or does your wife do that? A man needs a hobby, Miss Savalas. Guard, leave the room. I need a moment alone, Mr. Jackson. So, Mr. Jackson, I'm pleased to inform you that you will be able to explore your hobbies in even greater...
So, this is paradise. If you can afford. Gentlemen, glad to hear you made it out of New York. Where are we? Olivia decrypted the Data 47 recovered from the bank. We isolated three transactions from Providence partner accounts. All made out to Haven, a small corporation operating out of the Maldives. And what does Haven do? To the public, they specialize in reputation management for the rich and famous. The real money, however, comes from the covert reconstruction of identities for wealthy criminals. They make people disappear. The partners are using Haven to acquire new identities. Yes. Olivia's been attempting to hack the Haven servers, but the owners of Haven are manually resetting the access keys every 10 hours. That, unfortunately, makes them targets. Haven Island is a true tropical paradise. Owned by the company's founder, Tyson Williams, the island is used by Haven as a combined headquarters and client entertainment center. Current and potential clients are ferried to the island and treated to the very best the Maldives have to offer. Michelin star chefs, a full massage spa, private huts, exercise facilities, and all the comforts of a luxury island resort are made available to them. 47. We will be sending you in as a potential new client. We've put together a convincing cover story. You're Mr. Reaper, a thief for hire looking to disappear for a while. Your mission on the island is simple. You need to eliminate the three owners of Haven. Tyson Williams, founder and rumored tyrannical CEO of Haven. Ludmilla Vitrova, a former confidence artist hired by Williams to serve as a client recruiter and handler. And Stephen Bradley, technical wizard and the brains behind Haven's proprietary software platform. With the owners gone, Olivia will be able to penetrate the Haven servers long enough for her to secure the new partner identities. I've uploaded all the information we have on the island and the three targets. Best of luck, gentlemen. Hmm. I don't rely on luck. Well, a little wouldn't hurt. Welcome to the Maldives, 47. The Haven Island staff is ready to receive you under your assumed identity as Tobias Reaper, a professional thief looking to retire from a life of crime. Ludmilla Vitrova can be found in the public sections of the island primarily tending to client needs. Stephen Bradley alternates between looking after a strict training regimen and working on a small private island. While Tyson Williams roams his large villa estate at the back of the island. This is it, 47. Eliminating the three owners of Haven should buy Miss Hall the time needed to do a full penetration and retrieval of the Providence partner data. Best of luck, 47. Mr. Reaper, welcome to Haven Island. Oh, please collect your key to the private hut in the welcome center. Okay, enjoy your stay. Mr. Reaper, welcome to Haven. Here is the key for your personal hut. Um, it's the one behind you on the right. Oh, and Miss Vitrova asked me to tell you that she has left a personal message for you in your hut. Oh, yeah, let's go. 
Let's break some serve. Two targets remaining. So, that's Stephen Bradley taken care of. Well done. Excellent, 47. I hope you can offer the man some assistance. Please wait here, Doctor. I'm sure Mr. Williams will be along shortly. That is Tyson Williams, Wait, CEO of Haven. A reputed paranoid I, tyrant, Williams is known for his bad temper and heavy-handedness. He asked me to fill in. I knew I shouldn't have allowed him to bring that mistress of his here. I'm running a bad fever here, Doc. Burning up. I can't go outside. I can hardly stay inside. It started about ten days ago. Singh gave me those pills over there, but they aren't helping. They just give me a migraine. I think I need something stronger here, Doc. Remove your robe, please. I want to check your breathing. So, you're running a fever, Mr. Williams? Yeah, like I said, more than a week now, but the worst thing is the headache. Bad migraine, Doc. The light therapy doesn't help me a lot. What can you do for me? Let's have a quick look at you before we do anything <coughs> drastic, Mr. Williams. Fine, fine. Cough, please. Look, tell it to me straight, Doc. Is it bad? I got some very serious business to attend to, and I really don't have time for this shit. We'll be done soon. Turn around for me. <coughs> oh, hell! Can't you do anything to strangle this cough, Doc? I have a few <laughs> ideas, Mr. Williams. Tyson Williams eliminated. Excellent work, 47. Just one more target to go. Okay. That must be his computer. Hmm. That's all we need to do from here. Miss Hall should be able to extract the information needed from the Haven servers. Good work, 47. Good work, 47. Ludmilla Vitrova has been permanently retired. How was your time in paradise? Productive. Right. We should hear from the others soon. We're in. Whatever your robot did back on the island, it worked. Let's see. Yeah, here we are. You found them? Yeah, right here. But... No, wait a minute. Something's off. See here? All those controlling shares, those are basically the backbone of the Providence Empire, but... but they're not going to the new partner identities. 
What do you mean? I mean, they're allocated to someone else. Everything is. The partners are, are left with no real control. Who is Arthur Edwards? Message from Olivia. Everything's going to plan. We know where the partners are. We have our targets. You're almost there, old friend. Feels... good, doesn't it? We should head out before the storm hits. Time to fulfill our purpose, 47. To take them all down. Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the Shadow Client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the Shadow Client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets. To use and throw away. To do the unthinkable the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought. Until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back. Me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learnt the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 47. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? What the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. 
Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. 47. Come in, 47. Do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. I'm in position. 47, the inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. talk to the partners directly and make them understand why all of this is happening and that terminal gives me an idea there's a server room near the sheikh's personal reception if you can gain access to it we might be able to recover useful intel from it you'll have where is he where's the sheikh it's a busy day for us 
Surely we can give him a few moments. Do you know what he wants to talk about? What's this? Carl? Did you do that? I certainly did not. I have no idea. We need to get out. Where's the security panel? All right, that's that then. Finally, Stuyvesant and Ingram are gone. Providence will soon be no more than a bad memory. 47. Thank you. I'll meet you at the rendezvous on the edge of town. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the Constant. Now nah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look. You don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did... She'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, 
The family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlyle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlyle keeps a case file on the constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture. So don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlyle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlyle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlyle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlyle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlyle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby of Butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleep? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out the current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them. Looking good this today, sir. by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you 
So please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I'm sure there's more to find in Zachary's room. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Hi there. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I've prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Make sure you focus on your work. I will. I don't need one more maid crying. Patrick Carlyle. So watch yourself. Can you tell me where you were don't yesterday worry about evening? Me. Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. So, is that it? What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by board. Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Yo, Anne, what's up? Relax, man. I said I'd get your money. It's just going to take a little longer. Jeez, and how's that my fault? 
Calm the fuck down, Ant. You know I'm good for it. I'm a Carlisle. I'm made of money. Just gotta go. Gregory Carlisle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my... Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very th Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Professor Edward Carlyle. Can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all? I have a speech to write. Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, Mother, and the staff were all the company he had. Anything else I can do? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? The mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. You always led by example rather than one word. Rebecca Carlyle. 
Can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. Are, Do you know, I think he might good. be in some what sort of trouble. To Edward to wanted to go as well, oh, but Gregory really? convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr... Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. Painkillers. Lethal if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother, Montgomery, 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Gentlemen, he gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. You mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. I can't forget his eyes. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your niece, Emma Carlyle, murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emma's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. 
She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emma to reclaim what she lost. Marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gallery to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way, then. you want us in the same God, I hope you get Edwards and make him hurt. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. <laughs> Mission complete. Well done, 47. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! Thank you, Miss Burnwood. 
Now, it's my turn. Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other, and I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. been compromised. Abort and walk away now. Who? ICA. They tracked me. Don't know how. It's what they do. How many? One prime asset and a whole pack of up-and-comers. They've infiltrated the club searching for us. Christ, I think I killed one of them. Get out now before they spot you. No. They found us once. They'll find us again. <sighs> Keep your head down. I'll take care of this. think I could miss him if I tried. Yeah, I'll let you know. Unless the reception still sucks. Shit. Lost her. This is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Just keep trying, Agent Montgomery. Our client considers Agent 47 and Olivia Hall as a serious threat. You can't underestimate them. I never do, Joe. 
We'll find them. We're all in position. Good. Report back to me if there's anything. Don't worry. Strange noises. Hey, come out if anyone's there. Agent Swan, are you still there? That's two. Don't make this personal or you'll get sloppy. And clearly he's not making that mistake. They got my message. Where are you? Diner. Up the main road. On my way. You're hurt. You should see the other guy. Never killed nobody before. What you did back there. You really are all Grace said you'd be. 47. He didn't suffer, did he? He made it count. Bruised, but not broken. Start afresh, you and me. Get to the point. You and your friends pulled off the impossible. You stormed the heavens, took down the untouchables, and yet here we are. Status quo. It just goes to show you can't fight power, Miss Burnwood. Power never dies, it only changes hands. The best you can do is claim it. I never cared about power. Power is a tool, Miss Burnwood. It's the thing that gets you to the thing. As the next constant, you can be the agent of change. Transform the system from the inside, 
will be transformed by it. No risk, no reward. I'll need to think about it. No, you won't. The real question is, what will you bring to the table? Closer. I'm telling you, the file is trash. The Constant doesn't so much burn his bridges as blow them up. Arthur Edwards, whoever he was, don't exist anymore. His personal data somehow deletes itself from any system that records him. Way beyond advanced. The partners spared no expense to make sure their controller would be untraceable. How untraceable? Look. I did what you asked, but Gray's gone and I'm no Diana. I'm not who you need right now. You gotta be kidding me. I see, eh? I used every encryption known to men. Who are these guys? The best. It's only a matter of time before they get lucky. We need to take them down. <sighs> you and which army? I know where the agency stores its files, mission reports, client data. If we leak it to the public. You want to whistleblow the ICA? It's the path of least resistance. Turns out, you are who I need right now, Olivia. I do this, and I'm out. So, what are we breaking into? Data facility in Chongqing, China. Run by a man called Hush. Of course. The ICA site in Chongqing houses the agency's data storage and analyst division. Needless to say, security is daunting. The state-of-the-art server vault is biometrically wired to the facility's two overseers. Imogen Royce, behavioral analysis pioneer, and Hush, a data security guru with a taste for fringe transhuman experimentation. Tell me about Hush. A former cyber terrorist for the Ministry of State Security in Kedanyang who fled his country after one of the Po regime's periodic purges. He made a career doing cybersecurity for dark web deplorables, human traffickers, organ harvesters, scum like him, with no code or conscience. ICA sure can pick him. No offense. Can you disable security? A dual authentication protocol ensures that any handling of data must be directly authorized by Hush and Royce the proverbial human factor device to make the system impenetrable. Luckily, I found a loophole. If both overseers should unexpectedly die within a short space of time, the system reverts to a temporary fail-safe protocol, which I can bypass. Take them off the board, and you'll have free access to the data core, and I'll handle the rest. And you're sure it'll work? Look, I know, Hush. If I'm wrong, we won't live long enough to regret it. All right. I will leave you to prepare. Chongqing, China. This city is Big Brother's wet dream with more than 2.5 million cameras covering 15 million people. Privacy is a four-letter word in this place. It's pretty ironic that a cloak and dagger organization like the ICA keeps its most valuable secrets here. You'll find Hush conducting his fringe experiments in an abandoned apartment building. While Imogen Royce, the archivist, runs the day-to-day -day business of the ICA data facility. I just hope you know what you're doing, 47.
I'm ready to experiment. Oh, good. I'll let Hush and Sister Lei know. You're done for now. Come on. Right. I'm so glad you decided to go ahead with it. You know, you're gonna be part of something truly amazing. He's a genius, Hush. He's ready for you, Hush. He looks strong. Good. A good specimen to conclude this phase. We'll get started when Sister... So... The test subject came to his senses, I see. Good. Sister Lei, yes. We're about to perform the final test of this project phase. Sit down. One on one with Hush 47. Make Ready him when hurt. You are. Jin Li. Let's start at 100% signal strength. No. I mean, no, there's no need. The subject is clean, cooperative. I was thinking 25% and then adjust if necessary. 60% is minimum. We'll get no motor control below, and I'm not wasting my time. But... 60. Log concluding experiment H109 initiated. Run calibration 60%. Signal strength 60% confirmed. H109 initiated. Load suggestion, motor control, 44.1. Execute. The signal's too low. <laughs> the signal's too weak. We'll get nothing like this. Go to 100%? It's not safe. You've been working too hard. With your condition, it can cause you real physical harm. It's safe. You're strong. You can overcome it. 100%. Do it. Log, continuing experiment, H109. Run calibration, 100%. H109 initiated at 100% signal strength. Now I'll see you. Identify impulse string. Load suggestion motor control. 44.1. Execute. Nothing. He is a strong one. I can get to him. Damn it. It's too low. He's got spirit. Come on. Do this. Abort. You're going too far. No, he's on the verge to break him. Go higher. It'll kill him. It's already way beyond reasonable intensity. This subject is abnormally resistant. He's no match for Hush. Nothing worth shit ever came to be without pain. I am calling it quits, Hush. You need breath. Mm. Okay, okay. A short break. Uh, I'll return with a clear head. God damn that assistant. If they'd up the signal, it will kill him. Stay here, okay? Don't even think about getting cold feet again, please. I'm here to the end. Right. I'm so glad you... I'm sorry, sir. I can't let you through, okay? We'll get please started the area. when Sister Lay's here. Right. I'm so glad you decided to go ahead with it. You know, you're gonna be a part of something truly amazing. He's a genius, Hush. And this is groundbreaking research. Damn you, Hush. This is ridiculous, Royce. I didn't touch your drones. You liar. You lie about everything. You're deliberately trying to mess with me. Get me off balance to screw up my presentation. No, you're the one who screwed up, Royce. We had a truce. You promised you wouldn't spy on me again. I said I didn't mess with your drone. Both targets in one go. You are good. My turn. Just give me a second, and I'm in. You can now access the core, 47.
there, Mr. Bodyguard? Oh, yeah. Security protocol overruled. Good. You're alone. I'm sealing the room and dimming the windows 47. No need to worry about intruders. Clients, operatives, every hit the ICA ever sanctioned. Enough to shut them down for good. But first you need to locate all files referencing Diana and yourself. Training starts at 0600 hours. I should leave you to prepare. Perhaps I see possibility where others see limitation. I choose him. The two of you go way back. I didn't realize that you... I don't know. I get why you want to protect her. So, wipe all the data referring to the two of you from their system before we publish the rest. set up a link to an information non-profit site. When you press that button, it's up there and the whole world will know. There's no undo 47. This will shut the ICA down for good. You really okay with this? It's who you've been for so long. Maybe it's time for a change. I'll just return things to normal. No need to alert them we were here prematurely. Shit! I missed that. We're blown, 47. I can hold the doors for a little while. Use the fence to get out. Go! Now! All personnel. Breach protocol initiated. This is bad. That means they'll shoot on sight. I'm gonna create some havoc, 47. Make the core meltdown. Maybe we'll divert their attention a bit. Warning. Core overheating. Warning. Core shut down. Temperature critical. Warning. Fire detected.
overheating. Now to the data leak bombshell causing shockwaves across the world, the so-called ICA files. The disclosure of a... You win. So? What happens now? The ball's in your court, Miss Burnwood. I do have other candidates, you know. Most of whom have never tied me to a chair. You've seen the news. That was 47 acting on his own. He is untethered, he is unstoppable, and he cannot be bargained with. He will find you, Mr. Edwards, and I'm the only chance you've got. I'm listening. 47 has one weakness. Me. something. Buenos Aires International Airport this morning. Now watch this. Harold. Trail ends at the airport, but turns out that a top Providence operative owns a vineyard in the area. Don Yates, of infamous New York law firm Morgan Yates and Cohn. And get this, it's hosting his retirement party today. She's infiltrated them. She's sending a message. She needs my help. Could have fooled me. You don't know her. Anyway, if you're going after her, you'll need to deal with the Herald. Her name's Tamara Vidal, former CIA asset and political firebrand. She's a master of surveillance and the Constance's most trusted aide. 
She'll have eyes everywhere. You won't get far as long as she's in the game. Why are you telling me this? I thought you were out. Yeah. Old habits, I guess. Anyway, I... I need to go. See you around, 47. No, you won't. Because you're not an idiot. Let's just humor him. Yates likes his little games. Don't be long. You got my message. You'd never get caught on camera. Not unless you wanted to be seen. So what's the play? You're not the only one who's been busy, 47. I'm this close to becoming the next constant. I'll be able to dismantle Providence from the inside. Only one man stands in my way. Don Yates. That weasel was the partner's legal counsel for years. He's the top candidate. But remove him from the playing field. It won't work. If Edward suspects... I will convince him you acted alone. Retaliation for Grey. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. The Herald, Tamara Vidal. She has eyes everywhere, and they're all fixed on you. The plan won't work unless we take her out. She never leaves my side for long. Whatever your plan is, I'll help you if I can. You're sure about this? As sure as I'll ever be. Here, I got you an invitation, just like old times. Come find me when it's done. Good luck, 47. Hey. Ah, my fellow wine lovers. Hello. Welcome to Vineda Yates. I do apologize for the delay, but the Malbec grape is a demanding mistress. So, I am Gabriel Vargas, chief wine maker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but you're not going to like them. I, uh... We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Wonderful. Follow me. These are busy times. In fact, we're just about to harvest hey, this year's crop. Yo. Great expectations. So how do you like mm. Argentina? Like everywhere else. Full of Americans. First stop on the tour is the production floor where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are now assessed. We insist on distilling every grape by hand, which means that during harvest season, the grapes do tend to pile up. Luckily, we have plenty of storage space. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including an industrial-sized freezer unit, and last but not least, our trusty grape crusher. Interesting. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Black? Follow me, please. Wake up. Are you a wine man, Black? Somehow you don't seem the type. Oh, I believe Mr. Black here is something of a jack of all trades. Isn't that so? I dabble. I see. I just thought Yates might be sending a message. My mistake. So, have any of you been to our vineyard before? Only on business. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium, where the wine goes through its primary stage of fermentation. In these big open tanks, Yeast converts the sugars in the wine to alcohol in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser for the longer secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move I on... I have a question. It's... perhaps we can take a closer look. Certainly. Lead the way.
What can you tell me about this grape crusher? Well, as the name implies, it crushes the distinct grapes into a thick pulp or must by a powerful rotating cylinder. She is one of the most important appliances in our production pipe. Have you had any workplace accidents? What? Fall into the vat and get crushed to a pulp? You'd have to be a bona fide idiot. Waste of space, if you ask me. Yes, well, fortunately, we have had none of that. So if... Other questions? What? Huh? One of those days. And we're up and running. What happened to your colleague? Urgent call. Something about work. I don't think she'll be coming back. Oh well. I'm sure she can find her way out. Let's proceed. Excelente. So let's continue to the barrel room. If you'll follow me. So, are you associates of Mr. Yates? You might say we run in the same circles. Law and order. Must be very exciting. It's about 99% preparation. Are you enjoying yourself, Mr. Black? It's all very inspiring. I could see you retire to a place like this. Winemaking speaks to your meticulous nature. Surely you don't plan to be Yates's fixer forever. I have been told recently to think about the future. And so we arrive to our final stop, the barrel room. This is where we store the wine during the secondary stage of fermentation. The area behind the glass is where we keep our most precious bottles, including a 1945 Grand Paladin, the most expensive wine in existence. The access doors, which are made from ballistic glass, can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. Remarkable. Ah, here comes Senor Yates now. I shall leave you in his capable hands. How reassuring. Ah, Miss Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say, welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead. Very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little Herald get-together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine Herald. Once the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way, into the lion's den. <laughs> Why don't you take a break, Corvo? We're done here for now, I think. Oh, but don't go too far. I may still need your services later. I'll be closer than you think. Oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. All right, all good. Go on. So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss, disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. Go on, place the wine on the table. I'll pour it. Decant. Pardon me. I have always considered the heralds the unspoken heroes of Providence. The nervous system. Effectively and reliably. 
Ah, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. Flowers. I believe he has brought us something quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. This is the 1945 Grand Paladin, one of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary, the proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot, the wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long, savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Ark Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable, because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything, which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah, yes. Here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend, Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood! And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom! Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? Yeah, okay. Oh, I agree. Yes. Perhaps Edwards simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant and following this childish outburst. I dare say I am in the lead, Don. God, did she say? What You're lying, of course, which only proves my point. You cannot be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. You are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together, we can make it work. But you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? Yes. 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 I'm in. I agree. Yes. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. I'm warning you, Yates. This will not go your way. We need to get our story straight. Diana Burnwood died today by the hand of her rogue Agent 47. Revenge for her changing sides. This is what nope, we will no call access. a test. Remember, Flowers, you never saw a thing. Not a damn thing. Jeez. What was that? 
Man, I just heard a weird noise. I'm moving in to investigate. Awesome. Took you long enough? Quick, clear the floor and get yourself a guard outfit. Yates won't be long. I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug Cortazar do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction, you just be ready to move. the crime scene like we discussed remote staged accident Cortazar will bring the package get it done miss burnwood you rolled out the red carpet just for me don you shouldn't have so confident even in defeat i suppose you're not used to danger always safe behind your screens just tell me one thing before we part ways. Why me? Why you? Why would Edwards trust you? Please. It will keep me awake at nights, and I'm 65. I get up four times to piss as it is. Oh, it's simple, really. Edwards is proud. He considers himself the cleverest man alive, and yet we tricked him on Isle of Scale, and it's eating him up. He needs to win. Full, unequivocal victory. My recruitment was just the feather in his cap. By the way, you were right about one thing. Yeah, I'm all ears. Oh, shit! What are you doing, you asshole? Do it, stand there! Shoot her! were dead on. I will be constant now. And I will make it my mission to tear down Providence brick by brick. Finish it. Such a good boy. Well done, 47. Better get rid of the body. Won't be long before they come looking. When you're done, keep me on the dance floor. Oh, and dress appropriately.
Don't you remember? It was a huge scandal. One of those. I don't know. Whatever. Probably keep something weird inside. Weird? Like how? All my clients have kept something weird. It's done. Now what? Now, we strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Eat the brand neurotoxin. Transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, brute force is futile. It had to be me. It was the only way. To get this close. My family. I know what you did. After all these years, I finally know. I am sorry. You didn't have a choice. I did. Providence used you, but I'm no better. All I saw was a blank slate, a weapon to wield. I told myself it was what you needed, but people aren't meant to be controlled. This is a kindness. Goodbye, Agent.
myself. Well played, Miss Burnwood. Do you really think she'll be able to resist all that power? This is not how people work. She rejects the power, not the responsibility. <laughs> A noble idea. But please join me in the real world. I trust you already know what this is. Why not simply take it? Embrace who you were always meant to be. No, never again. <sighs> well, I had to try. Go on then. Do your thing. At least I die knowing who I am. What are you doing? This is what it means to lose everything. You're making a mistake. It's mine to make. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me, I seem to have, uh... What were we talking about? Don't worry. We were done. International finance continues as Milton Fitzpatrick CEO Alexander Fannin joins the president of Townsend Oil, while the new founder Tim Quinn and a bunch of other people step down. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, Agent 47. That's not who I am anymore. The pact is done. The past. Death. And yet, here you are. I choose this path because I can. There will always be people like them. So there will always be people like us. No one is untouchable. It's good to be back. 